Hello and welcome to Open Glam Now, the Swedish National Heritage Board's webinar series on Open Cultural Heritage Data and Institutions. My name is Larissa Borg, I am working in the Department of Digital Dissemination, and I'm glad that you have joined today to kick off the first of a total of nine sessions with me. Today I'm going to introduce you to the concept of the series, what Open Glam actually means and includes, and what you can expect from the upcoming sessions. So let's start with the background of Open Glam now. I am working at the Swedish National Heritage Board on a project called Europeana Common Culture. With my colleagues, I am working in the field of digital cultural heritage. We are supporting museums, but also other cultural heritage institutions, and working with digital media and data. Amongst others, we manage SOC, which is short for Swedish Open Cultural Heritage, a web service searching and retrieving data from any organization holding information or media relating to Swedish cultural heritage. SOC is also the national aggregator in Sweden for Europeana, which is an organization and database for Europe's shared cultural heritage. So why do we offer a webinar series on open cultural heritage data? Both SOC and Europeana are based on principles of open data. Throughout the Europeana Common Culture Project, we are working for a better metadata and data quality in the content we and our data providers in Sweden deliver to Europeana. Furthermore, we are looking for new cultural heritage institutions that want to share their data with us and new audiences. If that's something you and your own institution could be interested in, you're welcome to get in touch. In order to help our current partners in SOC and those who are interested in learning more about open cultural heritage data, we set up this webinar series. So the aim of Open Glam now is to help you work on your existing data or create better and more open data. This is not a goal in itself, of course. Open data are part of a bigger strategy and should help your institution and collections to reach new audiences, support researchers and follow your own mission. So in order to make this webinar series the most helpful experience possible for you, let's start with what you can expect from the eight meetings in English and Swedish. We have 24 both Swedish and international speakers in our program who will share their insights in very different subjects of digital cultural heritage with us. You will be able to ask questions and then discuss your own institution's possibilities and challenges with them. You can visit all the sessions or just those that seem helpful to you. If you've registered, it is possible to take part live or watch the recorded sessions later. And don't worry, all presentations will be shared under CC BY. We later dig deeper into the different topics that we will discover with our speakers during the next sessions. Right now, I'd like to introduce you to what Open Glam actually means and includes. Glam is short for galleries, libraries, archives and museums. But what does Open exactly mean? A piece of data or content is open. Anyone is free to use, reuse and redistribute it. Subject only at most to the requirement to give credit to the author and or making any resulting work available under the same terms as the original work. That is the open definition by the Open Knowledge Foundation. Open Glam also goes back to an initiative by the Open Knowledge Foundation and promotes free and open access to digital cultural heritage. Just like this webinar series demonstrates, it is a truly global network of people and institutions that try to make cultural heritage available and accessible to everyone. You might wonder why is it important to open not only an institution's physical doors, but to make their collections both physically and digitally accessible to the public too. Cultural heritage belongs to everyone. It was created by and for all kinds of people. The digitization of physical heritage objects enables them to move out of storage rooms, library shelves and file drawers and land in the hands of the world's citizens. When cultural heritage is digital, there is nothing standing in the way of sharing and reusing it. It can be sampled, remixed, embedded. It can illustrate new stories and move into new media. It can adorn books, posters and public spaces, advance research and make ideas and creativity blossom. When cultural heritage is digital, open and shareable, it becomes common property, something that is right at hand every day. It becomes a part of us. I couldn't say it any better. So <laughs> I think this quote from Moretta demonstrates quite well the essence of Open Glam, enabling new connections between collections, objects, cultural heritage, and communities, researchers, and creative industries. How can we achieve this? 
During the upcoming eight sessions, we will hear about different approaches how to tackle this. So let's start with five principles that the Open GLAM initiative, um, that includes everyone who wants to get involved, has continuously worked on. So the first one is release digital information about the artifacts, so metadata, into the public domain using an appropriate legal tool such as the Creative Commons Zero Waiver. This means that you share the digitized knowledge your institution has about an object or in a material heritage practice with CC0. This is, by the way, also a requirement to be part of Europeana or SOC. The purpose is to make your data reusable and discoverable and to help spread knowledge freely. Attention! This does not mean that you have to share the digital object itself, for example an image file, with an open license. This is just about the metadata, the information you, for example, have in your collection management system about the object. The second one, keep digital representations of work for which copyright has expired in the public domain by not adding new rights to them. When a painting's copyright, for example, has expired, some museums add a new copyright st statement for the painting's digital image. From an open GLAM point of view, this is problematic, as this practice prevents the possibility of sharing and reusing a cultural heritage that should belong to everyone. You will find more information actually, and studies about this aspect of the documentation of this session on our website. So let's come to the third one. When publishing data, make an explicit and robust statement of your wishes and expectations with respect to reuse and repurposing of the descriptions the whole data collection and subsets of the collection. So what do you want your audience do, to do with your data? Several museums have released statements what they wish to see in reusing their collection's data. Be transparent about what you expect and this is helping users to know what they can do with your data. And the fourth one. When publishing data, use open file formats which are machine-readable. When your data is not stored in a machine-readable format such as XML, JSON or CSV as structured data, computers can't read or process it, and that makes it impossible to, for search engines to find or access it. And that's already the fifth and final one. Opportunities to engage audiences in novel ways on the web should be pursued. So documentation is key. Let users know transparently where they can find your data and services. Be open to having others work with your data. And it might also help you learn more about your collection. At SOC, for example, we receive messages from users weekly who want to help by identifying places or people on photographs or enriching an objects metadata. So how can we work with these principles and achieve the goal of opening up cultural heritage collections and institutions by digital means? I'd like to say at this point, these are principles that should help you on your way to opening up your collections. And that's the point where we turn to the upcoming eight sessions and our speakers. And I'll give you an introduction to the sessions that, that lie ahead. Um, I'll just introduce those sessions that are completely or partly in English. If you're interested in the Swedish sessions, please make sure to check our website and the Swedish program too. So the first session that we're about to host is called Work Together. And it's about joining existing open cultural heritage projects like SOC, Europeana or Wikimedia. Um, I'm really looking forward to speaking with a colleague of mine, Mia Karlsson from the Swedish National Heritage Board, Barbara Fischer, she comes from the German National Library, Elisabeth Standard, um, who's working at the Internet Museum, and Liam Wyatt, the GLAM Wiki Coordinator for Europeana. The next session is about copyright between protection and democratic freedom. And it will tackle questions such as why should we use open licenses? What are the chances of releasing digital co collections into the public domain? You can also bring your own digital objects and we discuss their copyrights. I'm really happy that Sophia Kuhlmann, who's working here with me at the Swedish National Heritage Board, Dr. Rita Oyampere from the Finnish National Library Gallery and Douglas McCarthy from Europeana are joining us. The next session is about play with data, creative reuse and digital experiences. And together with Jane Alexander from the Cleveland Art Museum, Aron Ambrosiani from the Nordic Museum and Maretta Sanderhoff from the National Gallery of Denmark, we are going to discuss questions such as how can museums work with digital open data and how can digital collections enhance the visitor experience in the institution or its platforms. 
We're going to stay in the realm of reuse with the next session, Hacking Heritage, and we're going to discuss topics such as how can hacking help to open up institutions? How can we work together with different new audiences and open data? And what is the worth of, of open cultural heritage institutions for the society? We're going to do so with Tony Mikiewicz from the Open Knowledge Foundation in Sweden, Dr. Tim Sherrod from the University of Canberra, and himself a hacker, and Maria Svensk, who's working with me at the Swedish National Heritage Board and at the Kulturarbeitsgebot. She's also co-organizing the Hack for Heritage here in Sweden. We're going to turn to the user with the next session, the role of user-generated content in opening up collections. Together with Elisabeth Bog from the Stockholm County Museum and Adrian Murphy from Europeana, we're going to talk about questions such as how can physical and digital visitors contribute to the museum's knowledge? Why is it important to collect different kinds of memories? And where can we work together with the existing projects? And that's already our last session. After open data, how do we become open glam? And for everyone not fluent in Swedish, the picture is showing the Swedish word for goal. And as I said in the beginning, open data is not an, a goal in itself. It's part of a bigger strategy. And that's where we are going to talk to our last but not least speakers, Kaiser Hattig from Vesta Norlands Museum, Kar Karin Nilsson from the National Historical Museums, and Neil Stimler from the Balboa Park Online Collaborative. Questions such as which role does open data play in making cultural heritage institutions more accessible? How and what do we have to change? And what processes do institutions need in their transformation? And how do we do we lead the way? I'm very looking forward to all the sessions, but um, if you're wondering why there are no dates on these slides, please make sure to check our website. Um, the link is going to be in the description of this video. Um, and you're going to find all the recordings of the sessions there when they're online. So let's get started. I'm really looking forward to all these sessions and meeting you all online. Thank you to all the speakers who are going to share their insights with us. Whether you're going to share the meetings online or you're going to watch the recorded sessions later, please provide me with your feedback. You can write me an email, you can send me a direct message on Twitter, or join the conversation with the hashtag OpenGlamNow in social media. If you have general questions about SOC, you can always write an email directly to the team. Thank you very much for your attention and see you soon. Bye bye!